Hello everyone and welcome to Crossing Pass Television. I'm Mark Wabazuski, hosting today's show. And we're back here with Stephanie Sai, who has just truly an amazing testimony of what God has done of restoration. And, and if you didn't miss it, I'll recap it for you real quick. So basically, you, you grew up in a broken home. You didn't have that foundation of, of, of peace and comfort and safety. Mm -hmm. So you kind of rebelled and you, you kind of went out your own way, got involved with drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol. Uh, you were insecure, started trying to find love and peace through men and through all that stuff. And, and obviously, as we know, that doesn't end up in a good place. So doesn't you end work. up having multiple broken marriages, multiple children that you weren't being a parent to. Mm -hmm. um, got to the point where you ended up having an abortion, which you never thought you would have. You were totally against it, mm -hmm. which, which led you to really being suicidal and hopeless in a place that you never thought you could get out of. And someone told you, you you've tried everything else. Why don't you give God a try? And when that happened, you went to church and you had a message from Pastor John Nuzzo at Victory Family Church, mm -hmm. which led to the restoration and understanding that God can heal anything. And from there, you, you, you gave your life to Christ. You met a, a wonderful man, got married. Now you have a three-year-old daughter who's just amazing. Like just everything that at, at that time when you were hopeless, you thought you could never have. Right. And now you have it. And now God's able to use you in ways that you never thought. And, and it's funny because, you know, the, the Bible says if you lay down your life, then you'll find it. But if you try to hold on to your life, then you'll lose it. Mm -hmm. So you got to the point where you're like, all right, God, I give you my life. And now for the first time, you're actually experiencing life in the fullness that you're supposed to have. Right. You know, you, you find that peace that you'll never get from the world that you can find it in God. And the joy in, in doing what it is that God's called you to do. You know, so it really, really is amazing. Talk to me a little bit more about that restoration with, with the family, because you had a lot of brokenness left behind you even once you did become a Christian. Yeah, there, there was uh, definitely some destruction behind me. <laughs> so uh, once I, you know, found the love of God and I found this peace, I, um, it changed me in the sense of the way that I reacted to things around me. So uh, the explosive arguments between my exes were no longer there because it takes two people to argue. And so not only was I not participating in this, but they also stopped doing it because there was no need to anymore. Yeah. And so God slowly turned these um, broken relationships into friendships. And we were able to start parenting together. And I watched their lives change. And, um, and now they're both remarried and we're all friends. In fact, we all get our Christmas pictures taken together. Which, yeah, you know, you showed me that picture. It's amazing because yeah. you know, it's like the happy group of people. And and we'll get that picture. We'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, so you can see. So yeah, Matt, Matt so, will get them put it up. Yeah. So nine people that couldn't stand to be in a room together at one point. Now every Christmas, all nine of us get this big Christmas card made. You know, yeah. and uh, I think it's a beautiful thing. But it wasn't enough. Um, just like my spirit was when I was broken, I still wanted more and more. <laughs> but this time I wanted more and more of God, you know, so it wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I started looking at the gifts. You know, the Bible talks about the gifts, gifts of tithing. You know, I wear a dime around my neck to not only show, you know, my obedience with tithing, but to open up a conversation to others about tithing. Um, then there was this thing, the, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I knew that it existed. I just didn't think it was for me. You know, that that's weird. Like yeah, for I, me, it was like, what is that? Yeah, yeah I'm like, yeah. I know other people do it and that's great, but I didn't understand the importance of it because it sure. takes you to this deeper level and this, um, it gives you this ability to communicate with God and hear his audible voice, which once you hear that voice one time, you'll never forget that power, mm -hmm. you know? So, so I think that speaking in tongues and being blessed with the um, Holy Spirit is so important in moving forward with God. Yeah, so what was it that led you to that? So you're, you're, you're growing in this, so kind of share your experience with me for that, because I know a lot of people are just unsure of what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, why does it matter? Mm -hmm. You know, is it even really biblical? You know, I have some people say, that's, that's not even for today. Right. You know, and that, I didn't know about it mm -hmm. until it happened, mm -hmm. you know, and then I realized, wow, this is something I wish I would have known about a lot earlier, because I believe it, it, it's really, really important if you're gonna live the life that God's called you to live, he's, it, it empowers you to, to live the life that God's called you to live. Mm -hmm. In fact, when, when Jesus was leaving, he said, it's better for you that I go than I stay. For when I go, I'll send the comforter whom I promise, referring to the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's what happened in Acts chapter two. You know, you can read Acts chapter two and see what happened. Mm -hmm. And even Paul, when he would travel and he'd meet Christians, he'd say, 
you know, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Or have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, we didn't know there was that. Right. And they said, what baptism did you receive? He said, we received the baptism of John. Mm-hmm. He said, no, no, you need to receive this. It was one of the first things that, that Paul said, you, you need to have this as a Christian. So maybe share your story on how that happened. Yeah, so, uh, you know, going to church regularly now, um, meeting new friends, letting the old friends pass. Um, I had good influences in my life, you know, and I went on a girl's trip uh, with KC, a friend of mine from Victory Church. And it was funny because there was like 13 of us and they were having a conversation and they were talking about um, what God has done through speaking in tongues. And I, I remember thinking and then saying out loud, you all speak in tongues? And they were like, yeah, don't you? <laughs> so um, anytime I had ever asked about speaking in tongues and how, how does that work? How do I get that? I always had these very um, mediocre type of responses, like you just open your heart and believe. And, and that wasn't enough for me. I'm a very literal person. Yeah. So Casey said to me, um, do you believe that Jesus came to die for you? I said, sure. She said, that's hard to grip, right? That one man could die for you and you'd be healed and saved. And I said, yeah, I guess when you put it that way. <laughs> um, and she said, well, speaking in tongues, it's just a feeling. It's just a step of faith. You know, even if you just open your mouth and yeah, yeah, yeah comes out, it's just a moment where you're believing in God to bless you with something that's already yours. The gift is already yours. Just open your mouth and do it. And she said, but you got to get outside of yourself. And that was the problem. I was mm-hmm. inside of myself. So yeah. she told me to go home and turn up the music because I'm a control person, right? Turn up the music so loud you can't even hear your voice and just open your mouth and start praying to God. And then it happened. Yeah. And it was like heaven fell upon me. Yeah. I could feel God's presence deeper than I had ever felt it. Yeah. And I could feel him flowing through my veins. Yeah. Yeah. It was a manifest presence. And, and, and I know people have different experiences. I've shared my story yeah. on, on how I received it. But one thing I'll say that happened is it, I felt like oil get poured into my head and electricity. And, and truly the manifest presence of God was on me. Mm-hmm. And it was a self-testifying presence that whenever I was in that moment, I knew who he was mm-hmm. just because of, it, I could sense the power, his holiness. And, and the thing that was the most impressible, like I, I just most, just blown away by, mm-hmm. was the level of his love, right? Most people don't understand that love because on, on your flesh, you can't have it. It's, it's so pure, it's so unselfish, that you just can't fathom in the flesh, and only in the spirit can you even really understand that. Mm-hmm. And then, when you know how much he loves you, it makes it much easier to to, to trust him as a father, right? And even to, to serve him, and and, and even live the, the greatest commandment, which is to love God with all your heart, soul, and might. How can you do that if you don't know him, right? So a lot of times you go through this religion motion, and you're supposed to love God with all that you are. That's impossible if he's a stranger to you. So you need to get to this place of intimacy where you can know him, and then it's like, I want to serve you yeah. because I understand who you are, mm-hmm. you know? And the powerful thing about it is, is that um, we as people, we know what our thoughts are, we know what our desires are, but our spirit is different, mm-hmm. and our spirit knows what we need. And when we speak in the spirit, sometimes we don't even know what we're asking for, and neither does the enemy because he can't understand that language. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so important is that it is a private language between you and God. And um, you have the ability to ask for things for your family or for people that you may not even know. Yeah. And God can intercede in a way that he couldn't if you were speaking to him directly in, yeah. your, in your English tongue or whatever your native tongue is. Right. So. Yeah, amen. But yeah. after that yeah. happened, um, there was definitely an element that changed. And I heard God's audible voice. And, um, and I remember waking up. It was just a few days later. And I heard God say to me, you're going to meet someone today. And you're going to um, you're going to talk to them, and I didn't know what that meant. And the whole day went on, and it didn't happen. And I got frustrated and thought I was manifesting it. And sure enough, at the end of my day, I ran into that man. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So tell me a little bit more about what happened because the coincidences that led to you meeting that person, uh, it, it's definitely God. Absolutely, That's all yeah. absolutely. So I went to um, the Volkswagen dealership to get my oil change. They didn't even have me in the system, which made me have to wait four hours there to get it done. (laughs) At that point, I hadn't eaten. I had a headache. I was supposed to stop at a restaurant I used to work at and see the owner. Um, And I I decided I wasn't going to do that, that that this wasn't a real thing. I was making this up. Mm -hmm. Well, then there was traffic on the way home, and I got stuck in construction. 
and I had to go in right yeah. in front of that restaurant because <laughs> I had to use the bathroom. Yeah. And when I walked in, I remember a man saying to me as I walked up to um, the bar where the owner was, he said, you're Stephanie. And I was like, excuse me? He said, I saw you share your testimony at Victory Church a few weeks ago, and it... And you're the one that's here to talk to me today, huh? He said you're the one that's here to talk to me. Yeah. He knew it. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So uh, I started talking to him. He told me he was there to um, more or less possibly end it all. And he told God the same thing I told God. You better show up today. And um, he was drinking and lost his family, lost his job. He pushed his mm. beer away from him. And him and I spoke for two hours. And I said scriptures I didn't even know I knew. And wow. the Holy Spirit worked through my mouth. And uh, he now is one of the leaders of Victory Family Church for uh, Victory Group, which is an alcohol and drug recovery group. That and he hasn't drank amazing. a day in his life, and he got his family back. That is just amazing. You know, and I, I think even, even with that man, the problem he had is unforgiveness for himself because he messed up. And how can he move on until he has self-healing, and, and as you needed self-healing? Mm -hmm. Or even how can you love God whenever you have bitterness towards someone else? One of the big things that holds Christians back is unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about that. You know, pray these things. But first, if you have something against your brother, go, go rectify it. You shouldn't even pray for things if you have unforgiveness for somebody, mm -hmm. including yourself. You just can't grow. Unforgiveness is just such an important thing to get rid of mm -hmm. so you can live in that peace and love. Because exactly. unforgiveness is really not loving, no matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to go now to a, something to think about where we talk about the importance of forgiveness. So uh, we'll go to that now and then we'll be back. So check this out and we'll be back. on something to think about, we're going to be talking about the importance of forgiveness. There are not too many subjects that I can think of that have broken up more relationships, caused more strife between family members, or really even just eat at someone's inner soul than forgiveness. Um, I want to start off by reading from Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 that it talks about how we should forgive. As Christians, we're commanded to forgive. It says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do so. And that also uh, relates to Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, 15. Um, there it has the Lord, Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, it says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then it goes on in verse 14, it says, So for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Um, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. So it's more than just a suggestion. It's actually essential as a Christian. If, if you want to be forgiven, which we all do, uh, so that we can be right with God and, and go to heaven, then we must forgive those who've wronged us. So it's, it's so vital from a salvation's perspective, that we don't hold on to grudges and have unforgiveness in our heart. Aside from that, normally from what I see and from what I hear just talking to people and through the stories that we have on the show, forgiveness doesn't hurt anyone more than the person who holds the unforgiveness in their heart. Uh, it, it's almost like they're, they're, the toxin that they allow to build in themselves. So it not only destroys their own relationships, but it can, can affect their health, it can affect their well-being, it can affect their, their mental state. There's so many things that are, that are liberated by forgiveness and so many things that are toxic when you, when you hold it in. Also, you have to think about what is causing this unforgiveness. What is it that made you have this unforgiveness? Did someone steal from you? Did someone wrong from you? Did someone have something? Did they say something that, that was hurtful? So you kind of have to think about why is it that you're so hurt or you have so much bitterness inside of you? Uh, and when you look at it from God's perspective, let's just say, for example, um, maybe it was your parents. They weren't, they weren't good towards you. They, they had something that they did that really hurt you or they felt they weren't there for you. Uh, so having that unforgiveness means you're not viewing them the way that God views them. You know, God wants everyone to be forgiven. God will take anyone back when they get their heart right. So if you're looking at the situation with love, then the right thing to do is forgive. You know, you think of the story of the prodigal son. Uh, that's kind of the way that God views us. That we go out there and we make all these mistakes or we do these things. We're living a life that's not holy. And the father would have every right to be spiteful and, and to, 
to look at the son and say, you messed up, you know, you, you weren't loyal to me. But that's not what happened. You know, the father welcomed him back with open arms and, and put the signet ring back on his hand and all of us forgiven. That's the way that God views us. So whenever you really get a hold of God's heart, then that's the way that we're supposed to treat other people as well. And it also comes back to your own self-identity. So if someone says something that's hurtful to you, and if you understand who you are in Christ, then you won't receive that. You'll know that it's a lie. A lot of times when someone hurts somebody, it's because they're hurting themselves inside. So it's important to see that what they're saying or what they're portraying on you is more of a reflection of what's going on in their heart and not about you. So when you, when you see that, then you'll look at the situation differently. Like, all right, I understand that this person is, is saying these things that are hurtful, but maybe it's because they need help. Maybe it's because they don't understand God's love, or maybe it's because they're battling with something that they're not sharing that I don't know about. And when you, when you have that mindset, it kind of flips it to where, how can I take the situation that's bad, and instead of adding to the problem, instead of fueling the fire, how can I use this to bring God glory, to share the love of God, and actually maybe even help the people that are wronging you, you know? So uh, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to take these situations and act them in humility and, and act with them in love. In that we give them glory. There's no glory in unforgiveness. There's no love in unforgiveness. So, uh, you know, a, a, no matter what you're battling, if, if you can't get over it, then maybe find someone that can help you, that give you a perspective on, on what it is. And, and at Crossing Pass, we're willing to do that for you even here. Uh, you know, when, when we go back to the show, there'll be a number on the screen. Give us a call. Share what you're going through. We'd love to help you figure out how you can mend these relationships in your life so that you can be right with, with these people in your life and most of all, right with God. Welcome back. We're back here with Stephanie Sai, and really unforgiveness for you had been something you had to get over on many levels and, 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 and a lot of you in yourself. And it was really pivotal to you getting restored and where you're at now. Mm -hmm. And what, what are some of the other things and people you've been able to touch now since then? So being able to forgive myself, I then uh, was able to reach out to my second husband and um, ask him for his forgiveness. And uh, we became friends on social media, which gave him a window into my new life, um, which ultimately uh, had him reach out to me and say he wanted his life to look like mine. Um, I started a ministry this year and we meet once a week on Saturdays. And uh, this past Saturday, he asked if he could come. And uh, so we had it in our home. He came there. And not only um, were my husband and myself able to pray over him, but he asked God into his life. And, uh, and so it's been beautiful to see what uh, restora or restoration looks like, just not only for me, but how it's touched lives around me, including an atheist. Yeah, because you do have your own ministry now. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about what the ministry looks like. Uh, it's called Unbranded. Um, because I feel like we all get to a place of hopefulness, not all, but people that are living in this destructive pattern get to a place of hopefulness where they feel so branded by their past. I'm divorced. I've had an abortion. I've done drugs. I've failed. And those are brandings of the world. That's God can undo every single stitch of that. And, um, and so we meet weekly and it's just an open place for God to move. Uh, one thing that I think a lot of us can relate to is when we're younger, we're going through breakups, you know. It's the first thing you do. You turn on the radio, you get that love song, you get that sad song and it helps you through it, you know? And, um, and in church, you get to worship a little bit, but the meat of church is getting the word of God, right? So I wanted a place for people to be able to come and to just let God move through music and touch the heart, you know, which has now led me to um, putting an event together. I had a dream and in the dream, I was standing in a field and it was kind of like Maverick City, you know, and I had no shoes on. God said, I'm standing on holy ground. And it was just this magnificent place and there were just people everywhere. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit because I don't say things like so many bodies, but there were so many bodies in this field. You're hearing this in the dream? Like yeah. this voice, the voice yeah. of God. Yeah. And, and God woke me up. And in, in me being awake, laying in bed, I just kept hearing that so many bodies, give me a place to be. So many bodies, give me a place to be. And so I started to try and figure out what that looks like, you know, and, and I found a, a place called Prayer Mountain and it's the second highest uh, spot in the county. And, um, and I knew right then that that was the place because you could feel the wind move through your hair and, and I just got a chill. And, and again, I was standing on that hill and I, I heard the Spirit of God say, so many bodies. I said, how many people will come, God? He said, so many bodies. 
And you heard this while you went there. Yeah. <laughs> it was like confirmation of the dream. So it was like, yeah. 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 So, uh, so there's another girl that I met uh, recently. And um, she had said that she had somewhat the same vision. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of times where people will tell you things, but you, you know, you wonder if it's true or not. But she had it all written down in a notebook. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was confirmation that we were both getting the same exact signals and the same, um, the words from God. And so we started to put this thing together and uh, we're going to host it this September on the 11th. Um, it's open to anyone and it's just going to be a place where God can move freely. We're going to have um, some testimonies there. I think it's important for people to understand that there is no place that you can put yourself into. There is no sin that you can, you can um, do or live in that God can't take you out of. He's right there waiting for you to just look at him and ask him to rescue you. So that's what this place will be. Yeah. This will be an open place. Yeah, here's, here's the flyer. She gave me a flyer. Um, in uh, Jesus Woodstock. Yeah. <laughs> September 11th, 2021. Um, Revival for Souls. And, and the idea is, is basically what, to have music, worship, yeah. and preaching? A little bit of preaching, more so uh, testimony with scripture. Okay. Um, we're going to have an artist there that's going to do the speed painting with Jesus and um, creation. And, um, and again, the main part is going to just be a, a long, uh, spread out event where, where music is being played, a bonfire, where no one's elevated like a pastor in a church. You know, the church is great. It's great. But I, God's not calling me to lead a church. He's calling me to put a place together, a Jesus Woodstock, right, where yeah. anyone can be intrigued to come see what that looks like. Yeah. Even the, the most broken who wouldn't enter a church might come to a Jesus Woodstock. <laughs> yeah, and what's powerful is the scripture says that God will inhabit the praises of his people. Mm -hmm. So just by praising God, like literally the presence of God can fall and really move in ways that, we, that couldn't happen otherwise, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I remember talking to you earlier, you said when you were a kid, you always wanted to go to Woodstock. Like, man, I wish I could have went to Woodstock, <laughs> right? Yeah, what a thing to wish, right? Yeah. Yeah, I always said, man, I, I bet there was some good stuff at Woodstock, some fun times at Woodstock, you know. And then, then when God put this on my heart, I heard the words, Jesus Woodstock, and I'm like, you, I can't call it that. that no way. And then God kind of um, comforted me and let me reminded me that we live in a desensitized world where our children and us as people are being taught that no, there's no boundaries. There's no, there's no line you can cross that it means anything, right? So Jesus Woodstock, God said, you've got to get their attention. Mm -hmm. You're okay. You can call it that because that's what it is. Yeah. In, in a way, it's almost maybe a restoration of morality because like back then you started to have the turning away from God and yeah. just live for yourself, live for pleasure, do whatever makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about God. In fact, there is no God. Right. Right. So this could be a way of like restoration of that, the beginning of a restoration back to the things of God, back to living mm -hmm. the way that he's called us to live. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that movement was all kind of empowered by like no more oppression of of the, you know, the Bible and mm -hmm. living away, under these rules as if like God is against you having fun, mm -hmm. you know? But really God gives us these rules as you've seen, you can try it the other way. Mm -hmm. And what's it lead to? Pain, destruction, suffering, loss, mm -hmm. you know? And then you turn it to God and what happens? Restoration, true peace that this world doesn't even understand, mm -hmm. true love that this world doesn't even understand, mm -hmm. and the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Mm -hmm. So these rules and this oppression that they are so against was really why the world is, is falling apart. The, the moral depravity, uh, antidepressants are what? The number one or number two medication in one of the wealthiest nations of the world. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why, why, why are marriages, the divorce rates going higher than ever before? More kids in broken homes. Mm -hmm. It's because Satan was able to take something and say, yeah, I, I can live however I want. Mm -hmm. And then that ends up leading to a, a down a path of destruction, and, and and over time just starts eroding, eroding, and eroding, and and now is the time to restore us back into God, mm -hmm. and and to see Him really restore this nation and 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 restore the church, and for people to live out their life and to see testimonies like your like yours and say, maybe all of this Christian stuff isn't just religion, maybe they're not all just hypocrites, maybe some of these people actually believe what they say they believe, and they're actually living what they say. They want to live, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it really is amazing. I'm excited. I'm going to be there, awesome. you know. And uh, we'll put the information on the screen so anybody who's interested can go to that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as we close here, any of you out there who are feeling, you know, I, I wish I could get closer to God or I wish I could know that I was forgiven and I could be restored. 
Well, I'm here to tell you that you can, that nobody is too far gone. No one is too deep for God to reach down and, and pull them back up. So if, if you are here and you want to be restored unto God, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just repeat it after me, and he will receive what you're saying. He'll forgive you of your sins, and you'll be brand new creation, born into the, to the family of God. So just so repeat it after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose from the dead. I trust and I follow you as my Lord and Savior. I give you my life. Guide me, show me how to live, empower me to flee from sin and bring people into my life that are gonna help lift me out of this way of life. I thank you, I love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you said that prayer, that's not the end, that's the very beginning. You become born again, you become a child of God, and now you'll have the Holy Spirit inside of you that'll be leading you on how you should live your life. That'll be, that'll be getting rid of things that are holding you back and, and pulling you forward to the things that will make you happy. A happy in, in, a, in an eternal sense, in a spiritual sense, not in a fleshly sense, temporal sense. So if, if, that, if that's, that's something that you wanna continue in, you can reach out to us, we'll have the number on the screen. You can call us for resources. We can help you get plugged into a church. We can give you a Bible, whatever it is you need. We're here to help you on this journey. You know, there's so many people who are just confused and, and lost and, and think they're too far gone. And once you get plugged in to a church and you start getting a hunger for the word of God, this is truth, this is reality, then you'll, you'll, you'll view the world through a whole new way of, of seeing things. You know, the Bible says that until you're spiritually born again, you're spiritually blind. So when you become born again, if you said that prayer, you become born again. The Bible says, old things are passed away. Behold, the new has come. Your spirit that was once dead is now alive again. And you'll be able to see things and discern things that you weren't able to do before. And, and you'll have a life that you never imagined possible. From, from the people that we've seen on this show, under a bridge with a needle in their arm, dying, to someone who's suicidal because they crossed lines that they never thought they would cross, to now they have everything they ever wanted and more out of life. And they have a peace that they never thought they could have. And they have a, a, a knowing that they are eternal. The fear of death is gone. How wonderful is that? So you can have all those things and we're here to help. Thank you for tuning in today. God loves you and we love you.